Hi everyone, this is Gail. I'm gonna see if I can flip. Yeah, I think I can flip. I'm here with Jackie. We're just gonna get this ready, set up. We are here. Hi. This is Jackie Leash. Hi. She is the lender here at Intero, so she's just going to give us some information about buying a house. Uh, and so I know a lot of you out there, your New Year's resolution is to buy a house, look into buying a house, and you don't know what to do, or you think that you can't. You think that maybe you don't make enough money, your credit score maybe isn't good enough, you may not be a citizen, or you may think that it requires too much money, you don't have that saved yet. So a lot of people don't realize it's easier than you think. Jackie's a great loan officer um, that works here with a lot of uh, Intero agents and she really helps our buyers go through the process. It can be mm -hmm. a little overwhelming, mm -hmm. but you'd be amazed uh, with the right people behind you how easy it can actually be to actually buy a house. Um, and so we work with price points at every price point possible. 100,000 all the way up to 300, 4, 5, 700,000. So whatever your range is, we're here to help and you know everyone gets treated with the utmost importance. So there were some questions asked, so I'm just gonna ask Jackie, and if you'll have any questions, please type them in as you're watching. Um, and if not, then we're just kinda gonna go over. It's only, we're only gonna be here for about 10 minutes. Again, just to answer what the first thing you need to do uh, when you're buying a house, which the first thing always is to... Get pre-approved for financing. <laughs> Call Yay. me. Yay. Um, the biggest factor is knowing what you can afford, that you are qualified to purchase what kind of homes and what range you're interested in, what you want for either yourself or your family, and making sure that you have a lender that will offer financing so when you go out and search for the different homes with your agent, with Gail, that you are approved for that figure. So you want to plan to have your pre-approval taken care of before you've even gone out and looked at properties. Correct. And that is ideal. Now there are some questions. First, a question would be credit score. What is the magic credit score to have? What's, um, what is the ideal, but what can you, I guess, get away with? Like what would be the lowest? Sure. Um, typically the absolute lowest score available for financing is going to be a 580, which is an improvement on what it's been with some of the downfall of the mortgage industry. Um, the ideal credit score that you're going to want to have, obviously the higher the credit score, the better the interest rate. But you're going to want to be at least over a 640 as a first time home buyer or anybody looking for the most flexibility with underwriting guidelines. If you go down, you know, into lower tiers to 580, there may be some additional requirements to meet, but financing is absolutely obtainable. Good to know. So a lot of you who might be in that lower six or mid six number, hey, you can get a loan easily. And if you are under 600, again, maybe the interest rate might be a little bit more. But if the alternative is paying high rental prices, then, you know, you just have to outweigh your pros and cons. And that's where Jackie can at least give you some figures so you can make some uh, informed decisions. And another uh, thing to know about that is a lot of times there may be something simple to adjust or pay down or fix on your credit report that results in an immediate rescore increase to boost your scores right before closing to maybe help get you into a more competitive tier for financing or guidelines. So That's without amazing. having somebody like me that offers that program look at your credit, you may not even be aware of that. Great. So yeah, that's why it's important. Just have Jackie look and she'll tell you. Now, I've had some buyers do this and I'm going to have you explain why you shouldn't. But I know sometimes in the past you may have issues with, let's say, a telephone company, cell phone company, and they may have done something weird and you go to dispute that um, that bill or that, you know, whatever they're reporting to the credit agencies. Why is it not good to dispute anything? And that's a very good question because the first pay, the first thing any credit repair group or anything will do is probably tell you to dispute it, but it's actually going to harm your credit score because you're saying that you don't agree with something on your credit. It's going to make an immediate decrease to your credit score uh, just by disputing it. And it's temporary. It's not a permanent fix to your score. It's going to go through a period of time where the creditor and the credit reporting company are going back and forth with information about it. And then you ultimately have to remove a dispute from your credit report in order to be qualified for financing. So let's say you disputed something 
and now you're wanting to purchase your home, you have to have that dispute or any disputes removed from your credit report because nothing can be in dispute during the financing time. And when you do that, it's going to take a hit to your credit score significantly with the removal of it. So it can result in a last minute immediate change to your score that would prevent you from qualifying any further at worst case. So yeah, bottom line, do not dispute. Don't do anything. <laughs> do not. <laughs> unless you speak to Jackie's, unless you speak to your lender, they'll tell you what to do. Exactly. They need to look at everything. Even if you think it's ugly, don't go and take it upon yourself to start disputing anything. Leave it as is. Jackie will then guide you. Um, so that's the bottom line. Yes. Don't dispute. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's a very good point. Okay. So how much money, this is another question, how much money do, the, do you need to put down to purchase a home? Well, uh, that's a very good question. Believe it or not, there are still 0% down programs available. So that's a very great program. You know, if you're a veteran and you qualify for VA financing, it's phenomenal because you don't have monthly private mortgage insurance tied to your payment, which is something we can do at another um, chat at one point to go into more detail on. But USDA financing also offers 0% down payment. If you're a first time home buyer and you're not in a rural area or a veteran, then if you are looking at conventional financing, which may have, oh, excuse me, I'm so sorry. If you may have a little bit more, uh, of a higher credit score where you qualify for more competitive interest rates, you can do as little down as 3%. Oh, wow. FHA would require 3.5% as minimum, so that may have a little bit more of credit flexibility, and it just depends on where you fall categorically with your criteria as to what program would be the best. But standardly, you're going to want to be prepared for at least 3 to 3.5% 3 down as minimum down payment. Second homes also only require 10% down. And investments so only 15% down. So so for wonderful. you investors out there, if you already own a property and you want to get a second loan, yes, absolutely. you can get as low as maybe 10 and investment 15. 15, absolutely. Yes. That's not bad. That's wonderful. And How? so for example, on a $200,000 home at 3%, then you're looking at around $6,000 for just your 3% down payment, which is going to put also additional closing costs that you're going to have, which are going to be variables depending on you know the terms of the contract that you agree to, if anything's being paid by the seller, property taxes, insurance, things like that. But you're probably gonna wanna prepare to have um, a little bit more than that as well, which we can discuss mm -hmm. uh, on another question. But you're gonna, with in addition to the 6,000, 3% down payment, probably plan to have you know 3% additional for closing costs factored in as well. So that would be for a house, $200,000. Around 200,000, yeah, okay. that's correct. And how, what would the monthly payment be? You'd probably be looking at somewhere around sixteen fifty a month uh, with 200000 and 3% down on a 30-year fix. That's approximate just given estimated property taxes and insurance. Those are obviously going to be var variables that are property specific. Um, but believe it or not, purchasing in that price range is going to be cheaper than a lot of the market rents that you're seeing anywhere in Houston or other areas right now. I know some people renting at, for 1700 Oh, month, absolutely. And then they, they still pay for their own utilities. Absolutely. And, you know, if you're looking at condos and things like that, you may have a monthly maintenance fee that incorporates some of your specific bills as well. So it just depends, again, on the property. But yeah. believe it or not, you know, you're in control of your own homeowner's insurance and property taxes. You know, um, you're filing a homestead exemption on your primary residence in Texas. So you do see reductions to those as well, which may help get you an even lower credit score. And you're able to file your tax returns and get some of that back. Uh, at the end of the year. Absolutely. So Mortgage interest is going to be a huge benefit for you when purchasing home, which you wouldn't have in rentals. Yeah. So there's definitely pluses to, to buying uh, to buying a house. Um, okay. How long does it take? How long does it take to get a loan from beginning to end typically? I would say um, ideally you want to plan for about 30 days from the process from start to finish. You want to get pre-approved, which, you know, I can finish a pre-approval in 15, 20 minutes if, you know, we're on the phone or in person, and that's from start to finish. It usually takes about 10 to 15 max, usually on a regular uh, occurrence for an application, but you, once you've got your pre-approval done, however long you find the property, from that point forward through to the actual closing date is give or take about 30 days. Um, we now have to factor in about a week prior to the closing date for the TRID guidelines, which allow for a closing disclosure to be signed in advance of the closing date. So 
that week period at the very end is factored into that 30 days. So you've got about two to three weeks for the loan process happening uh, on a normal basis. Obviously, summertime may be a little bit busier, but we've got 24-hour turn times in underwriting right now. Mm -hmm. So we're closing loans extremely fast. I mean, two to three weeks is definitely doable. That's good to know. Now, I know there's a lot of people out there who haven't bought a house yet, but they may have a savings account or a checking account through a bank. And so that might be the first person they think of to go to to ask about a mortgage is mm -hmm. their their bank. What are some differences working with the bank as opposed to working with you as a loan officer? What could you bring, I guess, to the table that a bank couldn't? There are a lot of different variables with that as well. I'd say the biggest one is service, though. You get a personal hands-on touch. You have me from start to finish of your entire process. So you have a live person, a warm body to talk to, to reach on the phone literally at every single hour. <laughs> and anyone that knows me knows you can reach me at any hour. Constant updates. You have somebody that's invested in making sure that you and your clients are both getting the best service from start to finish. Uh, it's more of a direct relationship versus somebody just being a file number in a stack of millions. Uh, second to that is you've got somebody who's willing to work within guidelines that are available, you know, through the federal government to find a way to get you into home. Whereas a lot of bigger banks may not have time to spend with clients. It's just an automatic, you know, yes or no reduction and here's what you apply for and just push you out to the door into the next person. So it really is beyond anything of the personal touch. Rates and everything else is going to be just as competitive anywhere you look. We actually are extremely competitive and oftentimes more competitive than some of those bigger banks as well. So I agree. And I think a lot of banks, um, they get caught up in a lot of red tape. They do take their time. No offense to banks out there. If anybody is <laughs> watching you no, <laughs> Because I do have my savings and checking <laughs> through them. Y'all do wonderful. But when it comes to home loan, definitely shop around. If you do still want to go with your own bank, uh, at least go to them and then compare that to, you know, someone like Jackie who um, who works just doing this, finding the money, finding the programs, and really working hard to get it closed in 30 days. Banks, they'll, they'll need 45 days at least because... Um, they're not really in a rush to get things closed on time. That's uh, correct. A lot of them are quoting 45 to 60 day times just in general. And a lot of that is just based on, you know, uh, it's kind of an assembly line of a process where it just goes from one to the next mm -hmm. to the next. And there's not necessarily any guarantee for how long it's going to sit on one person's desk until it gets to the next point of the process. So you really want to be sure if you have questions, if you are concerned about where you're at and what's going on, you can make contact with somebody and get an update, which you should never have to because a good loan officer is always going to keep you updated. They're contacting you first before you try to <laughs> yes. contact them. So but you want to be sure that you're comfortable with all the terms that you're getting and where you're at in the process because it is a big purchase. It's your money. You're making a very big purchase with it. True. That is true. So bottom line, um, if you want to <laughs> go with go see what the bank offers, but then compare that to with what someone like Jackie would offer. And then again, you know, do your homework, make the best informed decision, and just know you do have that personal touch working with the loan officer that does this full time, nonstop, um, like Jackie does. Um, and then the last question we'll uh, end with Do you have to be a U.S. citizen <laughs> to get a loan to buy a house? Like, no. Do, yay. <laughs> no. You don't. <laughs> uh, that's really big in Houston as well because we have a very big international culture and it's, you know, melting pot of all people coming from everywhere. So permanent resident aliens, absolutely doable. Non-permanent resident aliens, absolutely doable. Um, you may not have a social security number, absolutely doable. So there are loan programs out there that are tiered for any kind of citizenship or non-citizenship that you may have. So it's definitely a possibility to get financing. Great. And <laughs> if you want to know what some of those programs look like or anything that we've talked about, um, today. This is Jackie's information. I'm going to see if I can put it up here where you can see it. I don't think I'm doing this right. <laughs> um, or you could just inbox us. She also has this nifty. Maybe I should do it like this. I'm going to turn it around. I'm sorry if I'm okay. going to make some of y'all dizzy here. <laughs> um, she also has this cool little graphic here of the process of buying a home. So if you want this email to you, just comment below or inbox me or inbox Jackie. Her name is Jackie Leash. And we can email this to you. 
So thank you again for joining us. Did we have any questions before we sign off that anybody? Yeah, had did, I see a lot of people watching. Thank you all for <laughs> joining in. Thank you. I just wanted to make sure we answered any questions that may have been touched on. I don't see any. I don't see any either. Okay. But thank you all for watching. Thank you. Stay tuned for our next episode. <laughs> Yay. Y'all have a great day today. And again, um, just contact us, inbox, message below later whenever you do end up watching it again. Send this over to anybody that you know that's looking for a house. If they weren't able to watch it live, I will save it. And you could just share it over to them. And we're always here to help answer any questions at all uh, about the home buying process, about buying your first home, about refinancing. We didn't get into that, but you can always refinance a current mortgage. Jackie does that as well. Uh, any questions all related to mortgage, loans, buying a home, we're here to help. Jackie, thank you. Thank you for so joining much. me. You have Jackie a great day. H with Network Funding, and thank you, Gail, for having me. I appreciate it. You're welcome. <laughs> Bye, Facebook World. Bye.